Oh, look at that nice lawn. Look at that uh, oversized, hideous, and ugly building going up over there. So much of that lately. Turning uh, Berkeley, California into a goddamn Manhattan. Anyway, I try to avoid this town, uh, generally speaking. Only reason I come here is for the University and the Botanic Garden. But I did want to show you this. We got this wonderful, I <laughs> said it very facetiously, patch of uh, English ivy, which, uh, as many people know, can be a really nasty invasive plant, not native to North America, uh, overplanted and uh, almost uh, every horticultural atrocity garden that you might come across. And this is one of the, uh, probably one of the top 10 horticultural atrocities in the United States. It just gets loose, it takes over, etc. But here it's pretty interesting. Were it not for, for this English ivy, for this horrible patch of English ivy, you wouldn't get this plant right here, which is an obligate parasite of English ivy. This is Orobanki heterae. Again, another non-native, but basically uh, you know, relatively harmless because, again, the only plant that parasitizes is uh, English ivy, this guy right here. So this plant produces no chlorophyll. It's an Orobankaceae, the uh, so-called broom rape family. Broom rape family. It has, not, no, uh, it has nothing to do with the practices of the New York City Police Department. It's just... Uh, yeah, an old uh, old English word. I try to avoid using it anyway, though. It's just kind of stupid sounding word. Same same deal with uh, when you see plants like louse wart or whatever. I wart, I say. Avoid all the colloquial names. Orobanki heterae. You can see uh, the only reason it's here is probably because some wise ass botany student introduced it. Thought it'd be funny to introduce it uh, to uh, this English ivy patch here on campus, and you can see it's just it's, it's just thriving. You can see, look at all those flower spikes just sticking up. Whenever I see English ivy, I just think of the smell of cat piss, because that's what it reminds me of, you know. Just kind of synonymous with a place for animals to defecate, their cats cats to spray, and whatever the shit. Just, I, I really, I can't emphasize enough how much I hate English ivy, and how much it delights me to see this plant, this parasite, uh, thriving here. While we're, here, while we're here, we might as well show you this guy, too. This is a member of the coffee family, if you could believe it or not. And this is actually, a, could be pretty weedy. This is Gallium Aparine. Again, that's the coffee family, Rubiaceae. And it's not, the, you know, the, it doesn't have any flowers on it right now. It's just got the goddamn fruits. The leaves and the stems are covered in these kind of sticky barbed hairs. Here you go. There's a nice uh, close-up. Nice money shot of those uh, aforementioned uh, little hooked, hooks and hairs. Basically, uh, rather stiff trichomes. They actually, they, they might just be uh, pieces of the epidermal tissue right there. But either way, it makes this uh, pretty easy to stick. It's like kind of got like a Velcro thing going on. Pretty easy to stick to your shirts and your pants or whatever the shit. You know, if you want to get crafty, you know. Anyway, this is also a, it's also an edible plant. I prefer. It seems like you should probably cook it down though because it's relatively stiff. The chemistry here, it's a pretty interesting plant chemistry going on. It's already sticking to my goddamn hands. Gal, you know, it has caffeine in it. It's got the, the alkaloid caffeine, as well as a number of other uh, phenols and flavonoids and what this shit. A pretty interesting plant. And again, it's uh, ubiquitous uh, in uh, you know many urban areas, especially in the Bay Area here. And as well, uh, probably in uh, you know metropolitan areas uh, down by uh, in Southern California and whatnot. Here you go, Gallium aparine. Look at that oral banky flower. Look at all the bracts. You like the bracts? Huh? Before it opens up, this guy's immature. He's still got, you know, Another eight, eight to nine to ten inches to go, probably. See little flowers. Zygomorphic corollas. Orobank is a wonderful family. Orobankaceae. You know, mostly, uh, I believe it's all entirely parasites, save for one or two genera. Both hemiparasites, which produce chlorophyll, as well as hollow parasites, which don't produce any chlorophyll and live entirely off their host plants. Not to be confused with mycoheterotrophic plants, which parasitize fungi. These strictly parasitized plants. Anyway, there you go. I'm going to go piss in the bushes over there.